Where is Dr. Pepper? I need Dr. Pepper to come and read these couples for filth because some of these people need to be put in their place a little bit. Hello everybody and welcome back to Taste of Reality. My name is Queenie. For those who don't know me, reviewing Merit at First Sight. Damn, I almost said Australia. What is this? Merit at First Sight season 14. Episode 10. Before I get into it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and let's get into some things. So we're gonna start with Mark and Lindsay. Uh, Elaine, stop. <clears throat> so although Mark is a people pleaser, he's unable to please Lindsay's whole person. And I was like, all right, leave. I'll get my vibrator. I got this. <laughs> so like, weird. Because he's also, he's such the pleaser. You would think he wouldn't. No pleasing here, thing. girl. No pleasing at all. He alleges that he wants to have uh, an emotional connection before he engages in sex again. Because when they did, um, it wasn't always great. And he felt like it was being forced. And I'm just like, yeah, this is confusing. Because you say he said this on the show and he also said this on the after party that like sometimes it's spur of the moment and sometimes it's like it's being forced upon you but then now per Lindsay's account it's like no you want to just get yourself off and then i'm here unfinished looking for someone to do the rest of the job and then you go to the zzz, zzz, if you know what i'm saying so i'm like yeah Maybe they actually need to speak more about sexual compatibility, what they need from each other. Because if you're saying you're pulling back and waiting for the emotional, these spur of the moment things is confusing. It's sending mixed signals and it's unfair to your partner. Dr. V asks about their sex life and immediately Lindsay's like, it's dead. We have nothing. And I'm like, girl, okay. I'm kind of catching the trend that she downplays it whenever she's frustrated with Mark. It wasn't bad for the first time. Okay. It wasn't really satisfying. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. But it was, it wasn't bad. No, I felt like, oh, he's really passionate. He's romantic. Great. He could probably handle me. Doesn't look like it. At the honeymoon, it was the same sex that you're referring to as, oh, it was mid. But back then, you know, oh, he rocked your world and you're so in love with him and all this stuff. I'm like, these two, they both, they both like to throw jabs. You remember a few episodes ago, um, she was like, well, how about you call your mama? And he was like, how about you have another drink? Like they just, it's tit for tat with the two of them. And they don't realize that these words stick. They leave an impression. And even when you've moved past something, the scar is still there. And I feel like it's unnecessary. Like there's no there's no need for the jabs. Like y'all are already going through enough in this process. Um, in the midst of a Nerf gun fight that Lindsay orchestrated, just to lighten the mood between the two of them, they get the intimacy box. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. I could have gone my whole life, my whole life without having to see this visual. And because I was subjected to it, you must be too. Yeah, we're suffering together. They're gonna come back again, I think, a little bit near the end. So we're gonna move on to Ola and Katina. Dr. Riviana visits them and she grills Ola on his archaic, archaic views of marriage and how he's all of a sudden made a cooking wife, having a Stepford housewife, a prerequisite for his partner. Now I question, are we mentally on the same level? Mentally? Like, no, like- You're questioning a, her no, mental capabilities based off of wanting to clean maybe I'll, less? I'll put it like this. No, it's not even like, I put it this way. That's if, what you just said. If I saw, no, 100%. He's then asked if that's all it is, the cooking and cleaning. And he's like, oh no, that's not just it. And then goes and lists a myriad of reasons why he's unsatisfied with Katina. And you know, normally I would love hearing people on the show say my wife, my husband, because I feel like they're getting more used to those titles and like falling into the role, right? Excuse me. In this case, I kind of just want him to call her Katina. Because if he calls her Katina, I feel like he's accepting her for who she is, is really looking at, this is the person that I've received. This is the person that I'm building a partnership with. How can we make this work? Whereas when he keeps saying my wife, my wife, my wife, I feel like he's stuck on the image that he came into the process with rather than accommodating his views with the partner that he's with. Like not accommodating, that's not what I mean, but like meeting in the middle. 
you know, you can have your expectations, but the reality is this is the person that you're with. So find a middle ground that y'all can both be comfortable with instead of saying, my wife, my wife, my wife is supposed to be like this. You ain't got that. So what else are we going to do about it? As the conversation is going on, essentially, Ola calls Katina lazy, childish, selfish. And I'm like, damn, oh my gosh. Then, you know, we see her get emotional and it's really heart-wrenching to see her get emotional, especially because last week she said she either um, cries in, in private or only really cried when she was in an abusive relationship, a verbally abusive relationship. And now here she is in your presence crying because of your words. Like to you, all of that doesn't connect for you. And as she's crying, this man does not console her. What is the struggle there? It's just his tone. Like I feel like someone's beating up on me. So like some of the things that he's saying, there are already like insecurities that I felt before this process. Dr. Viviana asks him what he learned from her confession and he's saying, oh, I need to change my tone and my demeanor. How about you change your verbiage altogether? The things that you say are demeaning to your partner. You wanna change your demeanor? Stop being demeaning. How about that, okay? Katina later on plans a movie night for the two of them because um, he doesn't really like going out but he loves like staying in and She's like, oh, I finally get to like woo my husband. I love to woo my husband so that he can pick me on decision day. Typically, I'm the type of person who's like all for making your partner feel appreciated, making your partner feel desired. But as of the last few weeks, I wouldn't suggest it for Ola. I wouldn't, I wouldn't. The way that he talks to her, the way that he talks about her, I'm like, you're really trying to convince this man to pick you? No, you're, you're the one he's supposed to be stepping up for. And right now he's not doing a great job. I'm sorry, girl, put, put all your efforts away. He's not worth it. At this point, he's not worth it. On to Mike and Jasmina, a question given to them by the experts is what could the other person do better in their relationship? And Michael says, it would be nice if you can see that I'm not your enemy. We're in this together. We are literally partners. And she says um, she would like for Michael to talk to her more about the little stuff so that they can connect better on the big stuff. And I'm talking slowly because I'm, frustrated he just asked you this the last time he said how can i communicate with you better what can we do to strengthen our communication if you don't know how to communicate you're an adult what's wrong with you blah 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 but now when the experts ask the question you're saying it would be nice if he talks to me throughout the day about the little things so that we can have that rapport so that when we have bigger conversations, we're already comfortable with each other. That's all the man was asking a week ago. That's it. But you just want to be stubborn for no reason. And it doesn't make sense. <sighs> Anyways. <laughs> um, they are in a better place. They get in a better place and then they hit rock bottom and then they're back in a better place. It's just, it's a very volatile relationship. Dr. V visits them and we find out that there's like no level a physical intimacy like at all. And also, if I'm being honest, if I have no connection with you, my vagina not getting wet for you. That's just what it is. Also, why when just me to talks is there always a plane flying over? <laughs> is the plane truly flying over or are the producers being shady? Because really, every time she talks, there's a plane? Anyways, uh, it's kind of like they're trying to mute her or whatever. When Michael is talking about why he's unable to like really let his guard down, he says he's afraid of, I guess, experiencing the conflict that they had earlier on. He's afraid of it coming back up, right? And Jasmina's like, well, that's not going to happen. I don't hold it against you. Okay, she says that. And then as he's going on to express, you know, some other concerns of his, she's quick to shut him down, quick to talk over him. And it's like, okay, if, let's say, let's say, for argument's sake, Jasmina doesn't actually hold that stuff over him. The reality is she is still rigid. 
she still doesn't really want to listen and she still believes that she's right and is can't be absolved of or or that she is absolved actually of all wrong she's absolved she has no she has nothing to do with the discourse in their relationship and i'm like how have you been in relationships before I really want to know how they worked out. I mean, clearly they didn't work out if you're here in the process, but like, has this worked? Has this approach worked for you? <sighs> Speaking of approaches, um, Dr. Viviana suggests that they do journaling so that way they can all get, they can get all their thoughts out and um, be uninterrupted, right? So as Michael is trying to pitch it again when she leaves to Jasmina, Jasmina's like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. And she's getting really frustrated. And he's saying, okay, regardless of what you what you want to do, I'm trying to propose something that can help us build our communication and you're shutting it down. And this is why it's hard to talk to you. This is why it's hard to be vulnerable with you. Like she's really there looking at him being like, I'm trying to suggest, you know, approaches and he doesn't see that I'm trying to say yes. All you're saying is no. All you're saying is no. I felt like there was a different way that she could have said, you know what? I don't feel like journaling is going to be the best approach for me. However, if we can do the, um, I say my piece and then, um, you know, you ask me if I'm done and I tell you that I'm done and then vice versa. Here's my problem with that approach though. It works in a loving relationship, in a relationship where two people want to be petty or maybe don't even realize they're being petty. Imagine this conversation. Blah, 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 blah. This is how I feel. I'm hurt. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, cool. You are my partner. Are you done? Let me tell you right now, I'm flying off the rails if you ask me if I'm done. So I get what she was trying to say. But I don't think that's the best approach for y'all too. All right, on to Noi and Steve. Noi admits that the reason why she retreats during conflict is that in the past, she tends to lash out and she's afraid of saying something that she's not gonna be able to take back. I know it's something like, obviously like I need to work on, um, but like, I just like, don't ever like wanna put you in that situation again, but also, recognizing that like I can't do it like overnight like it's gonna take a lot for me so clearly she's trying not to repeat what she's done in the past that's led her to failed relationships but the problem is that she overcorrected, and now she swung the pendulum the exact opposite direction and retreating kind of does the same thing you know lashing out at me or icing me out completely both of them does not resolve the conflict so she definitely needs to find a way to ride the middle and hopefully um steve really explaining to her how that hurt her and why that behavior is unacceptable is going to lead to some change behavior from her uh money comes up again between the two of them and steve <laughs> yo steve was like first of all i have money not only do i have money i can get a job if i wanted to and on top of that i create a comfortable life for you you have a clean home you have cooked meals i don't see you complaining what's the problem and she's like well i i want a partner who has a job and she's just so stuck on having a person who works if y'all had enough savings would you ever be okay with him being like a stay-at-home husband or dad it's just not what I want or ever envisioned like for my marriage. Steve's argument is, listen, 50-50 sounds nice until you actually have to do 50-50. Right now I'm doing a lot, of the, a lot of the house stuff and I'm also contributing financially. You might not see it because I'm not actively going to work, but the, the finances are okay. We are comfortable, you know? Um, with Noi, I get it. It's, it's, it's also an archaic way of thinking of like, you know, somebody has to have a nine to five in order to have a stable lifestyle. But if he's, if he's really, you know, good on cash, then girl, he's good on cash. He's approaching 40. I mean, he could afford to, to not work for four months, travel the world, gallivant. And so, listen, you actually have to have money to gallivant. That's the thing. You actually need money to gallivant. So I think you're going to be okay. So the guys and girls are doing their social thing again. There's a lot of social activities this season. The girls are doing some aerial yoga situation with the ropes and the flipping and the flapping. And the guys are doing ice hockey. Oh, poor Mike. He's never, he's never skated before. So this was, I don't know. I thought it was cute. Jasmina 
is talking about um, what she misses in dating and she misses the chase. She misses being pursued and the wooing. And to me, it's starting to make sense because she, it's like she wants Michael to just constantly be chasing her, chasing her, chasing her. But what she doesn't realize is you're already married. You can stop running. That's not to say the romance dies. That's not to say he doesn't woo you, but like you're still running. She's actively running. Stop running. He's here. Work on your situation. You know what I mean? And then you have Lindsay who also says um, she misses the wooing and the chasing as well. However, she's going to be content right now, right now, because they are having sex again. However, um, there was something. Yeah, she does still want to be wooed by him. She feels like Mark has gotten too comfortable and like... They've kind of like opened the curtain. You know what I mean? Like they've seen backstage, all the, all the secrets have been revealed and it's like, dang, kind of missed the mystery. With the guys, we have them uh, ranking their marriage. Ola says that last week he was at a four, this week he's at an eight. And I'm like, this is an eight? This is an eight. You berating her about not being the perfect Stepford housewife is an eight. Okay. Michael says that uh, he's been at a two before in the marriage, but now, sorry, now he's at a seven. This is a seven? There's a lot that we must not be seeing because I'm like, what? Okay. Jasmina and Michael later on go and do some tantric yoga. And this is the most physical they've gotten. That Well, that's my assumption, but I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm telling you the truth. They also have a box of questions. And Jasmina finally admits that she hasn't been vulnerable and hasn't allowed for Michael to have a safe space in their marriage. I have to create a safe space for you to trust me and me getting, giving you certain reactions when we've had conflicts, and I see why you've been the way you are, but nothing is always completely your fault. This is the first time that she's really owned up to the fact that she hasn't been the best partner that she knows she can be, you know? And it came off the heels of him admitting that he wishes he trusted her more. And I think that's, that's something that they're both lacking. It's like they're looking for the shoe to drop so that they can prove that, oh, see, I knew it wasn't gonna work. Just throw yourself into the process and see what happens. That's what I wanna see from them. I want them to just literally just let their guard down, see what happens. And if it doesn't work, at least you can say we gave it an honest try. But this, Whatever they're doing, it's just weird. Uh, Noi and Steve are given the senses basket. And uh, when they're sharing their fantasies, they have very different ideas going on in their head. Taking a shower and washing each other with soap and water, washing the other person. To have sex in a semi-public place. <laughs> <laughs> so we know Noi's a little freaky dicky. Okay. So Steve is going to have a good old time. They also share their fears, which is, you know, the fears are things that we've already heard. They burn them up to, I guess, symbolize letting them go. Um, I'm still rooting for them. I still feel like they're going to make it. I just feel like, you know, a little bit of the immaturity stuff can be fixed, but, you know, it is what it is. With Katina and Ola, they get the intimacy basket. And she says that she likes someone who's a little more dominant. I do like... Someone who's gonna be like, er, like, I like yeah. that. <laughs> We're getting closer. Now, I wonder if this is something that she shared in the past because maybe that's why Ola feels like testing her is the way to go, being so vocal is the way to go. Like, maybe this is where it stems from. He's aware that she likes a guy who takes charge a little bit. She said not controlling, and he's giving us a little bit of controlling. But um, yeah, they end on a good note, which is great. But based on the preview, it's not gonna last for long. <laughs> I'm about to film the after party, so stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, as always, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and let's be in the comments. Will I be in there? Maybe, maybe not, who knows? Y'all be commenting a lot lately, and I love it, but I just get backtracked. So yeah, I'm gonna try my best to respond. But I'll see you in the next one.